slavery, a word used throughout the world as a term for having restricted freedom. It is nothing new. It has been demanded, banned, and permitted. Although slavery is no longer tolerated in modern day America, we can still understand what happens inside the minds of those who demanded it in the South, most notably in Georgia. In the beginning, Georgia wanted to prohibit slavery because of the ever-growing concern between the English colony and the Spanish threat. James Oglethorpe was not inherently opposed to the enslavement of Africans as a matter of principle, but thought it was conflicting with their current social and economic intentions. Luckily, slavery was prohibited by legislation in 1735 by the House of Commons. As you might have guessed, this so-called ban did not last very long. Oglethorpe's influence soon deteriorated after he defeated the Spanish in the Battle of Bloody Marsh. He left the colony and returned to England. Excluding slavery soon became a lost cause, and with the absence of strong leadership, more people gave in to the idea of committing it. Soon enough, slavery was allowed on January 1st, 1751. The benefits and advantages of slavery were massive. The population of slaves grew from 500 to more than 18,000 between 1750 and 1775. Their rights were close to none. Establishing even some degree of autonomy was very difficult. In the eyes of every white landowner in quote-unquote Georgia's low country, the only way to prosper was to own a slave. Revolutionary Georgia was a big turn for slaves. Not only did it give them more freedom, but it encouraged them to disperse and flee. They wanted to find a better life for themselves. For some, freedom was found, but for most, there was no hope. Being dispersed all over the South, slaves were found to be loyal to the Crown, and others were again sent back to plantations. During the Revolutionary War, slaves were killed from raids, journeys, and battles. The effects of the war proved to be great, but as antebellum Georgia loomed, a more prominent and expansive beast emerged. Profit and greed proved to be too much of a temptation for the white settlers. The slave population more than doubled to 60,000 in 1800 and grew to 105,000 by 1810. The cotton gin proved to be a significant success, and cotton production was heavily relied upon. Why do it yourself when slaves can do it for you? Although the majority of whites in the early 1800s did not own slaves, more than two-thirds of all state legislators were slaveholders. Therefore, the political path could be influenced and dictated by them. Soon enough, slave markets were set up to make transactions. After a transaction, the slaves were under the full authority of their owner. In some cases, slaves were beaten by their owner and even killed. Sadly, very few whites were convicted even though it was illegal. Although slave life seemed hard at times, the Civil War while not inherently fighting for slavery, brought an end to it. Freed slaves rejoiced as their bondage ended. The foundations of Georgia slavery were brought to an end. Discontent between different classes still loomed, but the freed slaves finally knew that their life was in their own hands. Modern day slavery. Yeah, those concrete walls. Those steel cages. Many slaves come here every year. All the hunt died. Got it committed crime, but it's a catch twenty two.
Look, that thing, that, what it does is, is... This thing? Yeah. It's just, it's a camera. It also takes film. Oh, all right, okay. It's a digital camera. <clears throat> yeah. And this is a microphone. Too. Oh, okay. You know, I've been locked up 40 some years. <laughs> I'll be right. knowing. Go back to your time before coming here. Um, what is this? That is a... Peach? Sparkling water. They don't sell stuff like this here. Yeah. Never. <laughs> when I got locked up, my twins were eight months old. And that was the last time I saw them. I wrote them letters like every week for the first 20 years I was here. And by this time, now they're all adults. So I figure it's time for me to stop trying. I believe that people in that neighborhood and at every corner of Fulton County deserve to be safe, even if it is financially lower, socially, economically. You know, I don't think that that belief, part of the community should be left behind. Um, me and the mayor and the ch police chief have talked about the fact that Cleveland in our community is referred to as Cleveland that it is somewhere where just violence occurs, where they're marking up territory, it's blood territory, um, it's horrible. And you're absolutely right, that community deserves to be safe, and we are hoping that this helps to keep them safe. You're looking at it right now, you're looking at a 10, 15 million dollar deal, man, in the future, you know what I'm saying? At first glance, his come up story is similar to a lot of other artists in Atlanta. You find a way to make it out of harsh conditions, you're handed nothing but hard times. Winning under those kind of circumstances gives you an extra layer of resiliency where you're prepared for anything life throws at you. What is it like to chase your dream in Atlanta, to start off with nothing, start off in Jonesboro South, start off in Zone 3, start off in Sylvan Hill with nothing? It would be likened to the idea, or similar to the thought of walking in a store and buying a lottery ticket that hit the Mega Millions, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, well, in that case. He didn't come from, you know, a family that knew how to get him in front of people. Man, these kids were running the streets lost. Another night of crime in an Atlanta public housing development. My name is Tyrone Dennis. I'm a retired Atlanta police detective. There are six zones. Zone one, two, three, four, five, six. Zone one is your west side. Zone two is Buckhead North End of the city. Zone three is towards the south. Zone four is southwest. Zone five. Oh, yeah. Good morning, Mr. Jeffrey Williams. Be aware that on this calendar you are here because you have been indicted under 22 SC 182273 for conspiracy to violate the racketeer influence and criminal street gang activity. And I'm concerned with a human being who's wrongly charged. I knew right away that he's been targeted for 10 years by the prosecution. This is a wrong prosecution and I will defend him. You're saying your client is completely innocent. Mr. Williams is wrongly charged on every single count. 
The rapper who goes by Young Thug, he's accused of racketeering, making terroristic threats, theft, wrenching a car used in a murder, and participating in a criminal street gang as one of its organizers. It does not matter what your notoriety is, what your fame is. If you come to conversation, but at the state level, with California, with New York, here in Georgia, with a legislation that's also proposed by Hank Johnson, there is this movement to protect lyrics from being used in courtrooms. And I feel like this is really the beginning. We're gonna see it play out in other states as well. I believe in the First Amendment. It's one of our most precious rights. However, the First Amendment does not protect people from prosecutors using it as evidence. Truth and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury. Yes. State your name for the record. You may go ahead, Jeffrey. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. What do you want to? <clears throat> I'm sorry for disobeying the court. I'm sorry for disobeying my PO and being here again. And I just want to like be home with my family and do right. And I know I just got so many millions of people that pays pays attention to me, and it's like. I live like I lived so different. Not blaming it on that, but it's like these last six days is like every time these last six days was like the six days when I came back down to reality and I understood that like, no, nah, this is real life. This is not I got sons that's 10, 11 years old. They look up at me. I don't even want them to think like going to jail, even if you're able to get right out of jail, it's cool. Like, During Young Thug's arrest, you could tell he was caught off guard. 28 co-defendants, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. One of the biggest streaming, biggest selling rap artists today, Young Thug. Can you please state your true and correct legal name? Uh, Rens A. P. B. And are you the same person referred to on the indictment you just signed of 22 SC 183572? Did you just sign that indictment? Yes. Okay. Are you at this time taking or under the influence of any alcohol, drugs, or medicine? No, ma'am. How old are you? 23. And how far did you go in school? I went far. What's that mean? Like, I did 12. You went to 12th grade? Mm -hmm. Did you graduate? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? I mean, yes. Okay. Are you able to read, write, and understand the English language? Yes. With respect to indictment 22 SC 183572. How do you plead to conspiracy to violate the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organization Act? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. How do you plead to theft by receiving stolen property? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. How do you plead to violation of the Georgia Controlled Substance Act in count nine? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. How do you plead to violation of the Georgia Controlled Substance Act as to count 10? Guilty or not guilty? How do you plead to possession of a firearm by a convicted felon? Mm -hmm. How do you plead to participation in criminal street gang activity? Mm -hmm. How do you plead to armed robbery reduced to robbery by force? Mm -hmm. How do you plead to hijacking a motor vehicle in the first degree? Mm -hmm. Is this guilty plea freely and voluntarily given with a full knowledge of the charges against you? Yes. Do you understand that you have only a limited right to appeal this guilty plea conviction? Do you understand that you have only four years from today's date for the felony charges to file a habeas corpus petition challenging the voluntariness of this guilty plea? Yes. 
Your Honor, had this case proceeded to trial, the state of Georgia would have proved beyond a reasonable doubt that in late 2012, within the Cleveland Avenue area of Atlanta, Georgia, that YSL, who claimed affiliation with the National Blood Gang, was formed. The founders of that organization were Jeffrey Williams, also known as Young Thug, also known as Slime, Walter Murphy, also known as DK, and Trontavia Stevens, also known as Tick or Slug. That he filed on Friday asking for Cordarius Dorsey, also known as YSL Polo, to be removed from the trial due to his inappropriate behavior in the courtroom, alleging that his conduct could impact Young Thug's chance at a fair trial. Mr. Greer, I take no pleasure in us being here again, but do you recall when I sentenced you on the 20th of December that I went through certain things that you were expected to do at that point in time? Uh, you remember that? Do you remember? I'd like you to turn to page 13. All right, about line 11, the question I asked you was, do you understand that if you're placed on probation of any kind, you cannot violate any criminal laws of any governmental unit or any special conditions of probation without being subject to a revocation for the balance of the sentence? Your response was yes. Is that correct? All right. And in the next question on line 16, do you understand that you're not allowed to possess or use a firearm while on probation? All right, you remember we had that saying? I mean, we had that conversation about that? Okay, all right. On the next page, on page 14, you remember, and this is, I just wanted to kind of just point this out to you. Do you remember we had that conversation about you, you run the risk of, of subjecting yourself to additional charges if you have a firearm? Remember on page 14, about line 11, I want you to read that to yourself. That's not what you're being associated today with, but you remember we had a conversation, we had a lot of conversations about firearms, and Ms. Love's right. About six things in, the, in this plea colloquy talk about firearms. Yes, so do you remember us talking about that? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And Mr. Greer, you remember on page 21, I asked you how old you were and about your family? Yes, Your Honor. And about how, you know, uh, we talked to you about being put on a curfew. That's on page 22. Yes, Your Honor. You remember that? Yes. Okay, all right. And then turn to page 26 at the very top of the page. You remember me talking to you about, this is me, the court. You shall possess no guns during the term of your sentence or any time after unless your right to have it or possess a firearm has been restored. All right? And your answer? Yes, yes Your Honor. Honor. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. On that same page on line 19, also, when we talked about your, the special conditions of your sentence, also, you will possess no guns during the term of the sentence or at any time thereafter unless your rights are restored. This is a special condition of probation. You remember us talking about that? Yes, Your Honor. All right.
All right. You remember you signed. I want you to turn all the way to the end. It's on page 34. Uh, it's dated December the 12th of 2022. It is, um, de it's, the title of it is Office of the Fulton County District Attorney, Atlanta Judicial Circuit. And it's got one current charges, two negotiated sentence, three special conditions of probation, four defendant's acknowledgments, and it's a, the, your plea agreement. You understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I want you to turn to that. I want you to take a look at two, paragraph number two, negotiated sentence. B, in that particular paragraph. What does that say? Defendant should possess no gun during the time of the sentence and the other felony after should be restored. Defendant shall possess no guns during the term of the sentence or at any time thereafter unless his right to do is restored. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And your signature is on the on page 37. Is that correct? That you've read this agreement, you've had an opportunity to speak to Mr. Russ. Ms. Norman, about this agreement and no other promises other than the ones made in the uh, document in furtherance of this agreement. And you gave this freely, voluntarily entered into this agreement without fee force, threat, or coercion. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So it's not like we didn't have a conversation about this, about this firearm. Right? Yes, Your Honor. So... As I mentioned earlier, I don't take pleasure in sending people to, to prison. It's part of the job and the responsibilities I have as part of the part of what potential consequences are uh, of people's actions. But in this particular circumstance, um, the state has alleged that you didn't pay your probation fees. And OK, and, and, and I, I hear I've heard evidence that you haven't paid your your fees. You owe $141.08 in fees. You haven't started any of the community service in this particular case. So I find those to be proven violations. But, you know, those are relatively minor. I mean, we still want you to adhere to all the conditions, but they're of the three violations and the grade of those violations, they're not as severe as, as getting a new case, okay? A new charge. And part of the special condition was that you're not supposed to possess a gun. And the state was very clear. And in Ms. Pretty testified earlier about what the things that you were given in terms of your reporting in states one and two. And then Ms. Goodacre came in and, and, and specifically you signed acknowledgement of firearm in states three and prohibition of possessing firearms or ammunition in states four. And then I saw states six and seven, which were the which was the Glock 9 that was taken from the vehicle, which you were the driver, shaded three to four inches from that. So I find that based upon the evidence presented in this case, the state has proven by a preponderance of the evidence that you have violated your probation in the three means as set forth in paragraph four on the petition. Now, in terms of the revocation, your attorney has asked me to ask me to consider a revocation of two years. Um, and I certainly respect her and I certainly respect that, you know, you don't ask, you don't know unless you ask. Um, the, th the issue I find aggravating in this particular circumstances are several. You got arrested with a gun within six months of you being placed on probation. And I agree with the state that you're not a candidate for probation because all you had to do is just complete your probation and do what you're supposed to do. Instead, you were riding around the car with a gun in violation of your probation and what this court explicitly had conversations with you about. Explicitly. On the record. And for that reason, sir, I'm going to revoke the balance of nine years and six months. And I became affiliated with YSL around 2016. 
Is that true as it pertains to you, Mr. Kitchens? Yes, ma'am. YSL is a music label and a game, and you have personal knowledge that members or associates of YSL have committed crimes in furtherance of the game. Yes, ma'am. You were present when law enforcement officers stopped the vehicle in which you were present along with Jeffrey Williams, wherein hydrocodone, methamphetamines, and a firearm were recovered. These items did not belong to you. Yes, ma'am. And do you acknowledge the following statement? I recognize, accept, and deeply regret that my talent and music indirectly furthered YSL the game to the detriment of my community. YSL as a game must end. Is that your statement or acknowledgement? Yes. Rapper Gunna. You see, Gunna, whose real name is Sergio Kitchens, was facing a RICO charge when he decided to take an Alford plea. Now, this plea deal, it's basically where someone pleads guilty, but they say that they're innocent. Like, yeah, I didn't do it, but I know prosecutors could probably have proven their case at trial. So what ended up happening with him taking this deal is he had one year of his five-year sentence commuted, the remaining four years suspended. He was released, and he has to do 500 hours of community service. Now, he can be called to testify, but he can invoke his Fifth Amendment right. Now, he has gone on and issued a statement that says, quote, while I have agreed to always be truthful, I want to make it perfectly clear that I have not made any statements, have not been interviewed, have not cooperated, have not agreed to testify or be a witness for or against any party in this case, and have absolutely no intention of being involved in the trial process in any way. Now, So Mondo says that he's the co-founder of YSL, but to be honest, that's the first time I'm hearing of him. Um, as we have talked, the other co-founder of YSL actually is involved in this case and is one of the people who took one of the plea deals. So um, there has been some back and forth between Young Thug and Mondo regarding who the co-founders are, but it's very clear that they were all friends and they grew up together and they formed this group to make music. And obviously the group started to become more popular. Young Thug became the head of this music label called a YSL. And then obviously later on, there was a debate regarding, well, who started it? Who was the first person? Who was ground zero? So Mondo is not a name that I've been familiar with prior to this. And in fact, I did a little digging on Mondo. Apparently what happened is he's not involved in this indictment and this uh, at all because he was in jail. And he said when he came out of jail, he wasn't really involved in YSL. So to me, it seems like someone that was initially involved went and did some time, removed himself from the collective after that. And it doesn't take away the fact that he was there in the beginning. It doesn't take away the fact that he was there at the formation of YSL, but it seems like he has been a little bit removed, which is why he hasn't been wrapped up in this case and why he is now free to speak on it. And boy, does he speak on it. So with that- My man did what he did. He did what he did, man. I ain't put no cap on it. I ain't seen here put no- Hey, man, he did what he did, man. Boy, you didn't supposed to do that, my brother. Even though if you, I didn't be talking about it. Everybody who got common sense, everybody who's been in the streets, no, you did not. But you don't do no like that, my brother. So you can't say, oh, they tricked me, or, oh, I ain't talking, I don't know what's going on. And, Ooh, come on, my brother. It ain't no, it, it's no, it, you know what I'm saying? Certain shit you, you just don't do. Why is sell the why is tell that you can't take away the reputation they got in the street, destroying the ops, taking them out one by one. The Fulton DAs on the case though, vowing to take down YSL, the most deadliest street game.
Young Thug once said in one of his songs, take that shit to try. I guess the feds heard that and said, okay, no problem. We'll be there. We'll pick in. We're picking you up very soon. With all these gang throwing they doing on the internet and disrespect with slap tattoo on a index finger, make it known that they're gay. A gang here to cause destruction in the streets. And not only that, death. Just another story of black men killing another black man. Look here, wife and Lucci got young thug whole crew butt naked, begging to be let go. He needed. When young thug had something on. But with young thug dominating the streets, with every concert, is a whole round of recruitment of thousands of more black men becoming wiser. The game. Pink Slime dominating the charts. Lead of a vicious gang. Wife and Lucci, a first hand victim of that. Right here, as they filmed it, like, no sideways behind the car. And everything came crashing down too much. Every gang got a crash dummy. Young Thug's biggest hitter. Right here. He shot an officer six times and now facing years of his life in prison. Sitting in Fulton County waiting for trial. Another one of Young Thug's hitters. Going into the slave camp. The line of day penitentiary. A place where many black brothers spend the next 40 to 80 years in confinement. But meanwhile, the crash that means the crashing. Why is us flourishing in the street? Taking over when Young Thug has the head. Where he said, I shot up his mommy house. Now he don't talk about me no more. Controlling zone one, zone two, zone three. Black territory. The ops still watching. Waiting on each other downfall. But instead, both caused each other downfall together. <laughs> Figure that. Both awaiting trial in two separate RICO cases. While the young boys taking over the streets, repping at YSL, young thug mini knees, causing chaos, got Atlanta murdering through the roof. Bodies on top of bodies on top of bodies. But let's get back to that. That young blood slime life, YSL, it's all fun. When the lights and cameras is on, everybody making money, nobody thinking about consequences of the actions. People calling shots on the phone, making hits on the phone, sending drone letters to the jails. Come here. Go back to the handbook. Look at the code, homie. Conspiracy to murder, man. They got you, folk. We go. Life in prison. No more of them calls, jewelry, fashion, your clothing on, the mansions, the dope kitchens. Love with you, man. Looking at each other. Fighting over each other. Young dog, successful. Run from young dog to now young dog. A wise self stool. I know you had so many dreams growing up. I know you didn't think this was gonna, the end was gonna come to this. But there's always an end when you're doing bad. When you got that negative energy in the air, come up with even music. 
kill, kill, kill. Burn, burn, burn. That's what happens. Yeah, you distracted the world with your fashion. Wearing those dresses. You had big slime on your side. You had OGs apologizing to you on the phone. Oh, I'm so King Slow. I didn't mean to disrespect you. Yeah, game. Let's get back to that money you was making. Cause you was in. <laughs> Let's talk about the money you was with. Baddies. Ain't no baddies in slavery camp. <laughs> Unless what you call a baddie is something that any straight guy would call a baddie. When you were in that penitentiary, remember that. All the fun you had with the homies. Chilling with the big dogs. Drinking the finest. Smoking the finest. All came to an end because of one decision. To death and murder a big nut. Got your blood all. Your hands are dirty now. Now the cops coming down and taking our competition. Y'all was once friends. What happened? Friendship came to a bloody end. Was the media just talking? I don't think so. I think the media came down to something. I think prosecutors and I think all those detectives, I don't think they making this up. You know you rented the car. See your name. Your young boys was in it. You big dog. You big slime. Taking out big nut. On the other side was 10 points for you. But now where those points are? Sitting in the courthouse. Sitting in the jail. Eating food that's bad for you. That's what it come to. No more music videos. No more dresses. Just you. Concrete wall. And a bed. I know what you did to Little Wayne. I knew it was going to come back to you at one time. Little Wayne, man. Sorry, he kept his mouth shut. Didn't really speak much about it. You got your henchmen out. I don't know. Everybody out there taking your orders. You big song. Why, right, friend Lucci? Blood. He in jail trying to survive. He ain't even making a prison yet. And he sweat. Just imagine. Today's when he was making all that money. Selling out concerts. Now we at. Summer that what? Bathroom sing alongs with your homeboys. That's it. Remember that gang gang? I thought you'd be on balls. You on time. Not producing any kids. The whole family genealogy done right there. You 40 years old, you gotta do 40 years old, baby. Come on at 80. Yeah, you probably could do something, though. How many more years you got to enjoy? Five, six, seven. Y'all out there on robbery, death, murder. Gonna knew to get his ass for a lot of that shit. Look at him. Smart brother, if you ask me. Stay far away from those knuckleheads. Especially that young thug. Stay far away. Make sure you don't catch that cold. Get that shot. Season changing. Make sure you wear that mask. When you're around them slimes. You don't want to catch that bird flu. Like, do you win? 
next thing you know, you're doing 50 years. You ain't even having kids yet. You ain't even get married yet. Think about that. Young Thug, he enjoying his life. Life that he had. It's all memories. I'm dreaming about it in a cell. All because of a gang war with wife and Lucci. Somebody got to win. But in this story, both lost, if you ask me. All points taken away. Right back to the streets. The streets is 100 and 0. Never lost. Never lost a match. Could make you think you could contend against the streets. So many has fallen. Young boy after young boy, grave sight after grave sight. Death after death. Grim Reaper coming. Grim Reaper busy. Summertime, Grim Reaper need recruits. Get those bodies dropping, man. Keep doing the devil's work. Doing a good job. I applaud y'all if that's what y'all motive is. Cause the devil working. Y'all ain't got the whole bunch of enemies. Henchmen. Think for yourself, young brothers. Doing all that time. Made all that money on the outside. Why are you going to cause drama? Standing with a man called promoting more beef. This right here caused more bodies to drop. Many young boys taken away from me, mother. Body after body. Body after body. In them streets. Atlanta, Georgia. Meanwhile, wife and Uchi gang. They developed a plot. A plan. A powerful plan. To go back on hops. Get they points. Smoke they blunt. And the day they did it, it stayed down for week up. Dude ran out the car. He go right there. Doing a drive by on a made back. Do the drive by and a hundred thousand out the window. Friend got hit, threw him out the windshield. DA on the case. We go charges. Wife and Gucci. Facing a hundred years. Wife and Gucci and friends. Did they go right there? Gonna be old men when they come out. DA on them. Conway and ATL high. Everybody won't be smoking on somebody. Yes, yes, it's the new TikTok wave. Everybody want to be a hitter. Who's going to college? Dropping out third semester just to be a hitter. It's the fascination. At least he's working hard every day. Working harder. Stop y'all one by one. Put y'all in that penitentiary. That Fulton County Jail. Rats. Roaches. Bad food. Destroying your kidneys, your liver. Killing you slowly. Right? She laughed. They laughed at us when they drove off in the car still shooting. They laughed while my sister was on that ground. Most believed it was retaliation for the attack on Lucci, but it was actually just a freak coincidence. A random argument at a bowling alley that led to someone pulling the trigger and killing Young Thug's baby mama, which shows you how violent Atlanta was getting. Local journalist George Chidi says this is only the beginning of a systemic takedown of rap crews in the city that are tied to violence. Is it going to get worse? I think so. Like I said, there are other prosecutions coming. They're going to be chalk a block every month or two, probably for years, until the murder rate starts to fall. See, Georgia is one of only seven states where RICO laws at the state level 
and they've been taking down crews left and right. First, the feds arrested Rallo, who they claim was charting planes carrying millions of dollars worth of weed across state lines. Then the state took down Hood Rich Pablo and 25 of his guys on a RICO stint in Zone 6. Then last year, the DA nabbed YFN Lucci, and this year, they took down Young Thug and YSL. With 200 pieces of evidence, the state is ready to present. Tonight, one person is dead at the Fulton County Jail and two more injured, taken to Grady after the sheriff's office confirmed there was a stabbing. And this is just the latest in a string of concerning incidents connected to the Fulton County Jail. You know, right now, it is under federal investigation for accusations of poor conditions and violence. We want to get you straight out to 11 Alive's Cody Alcorn, who is outside the emails and calls about what they're calling inhumane conditions at the facility that is without running water tonight. Fox 5's Joy Dukes joins us live outside the jail. And Joy, Fulton County officials tell you they're working to repair a ruptured water line there. Yeah, Courtney, they are working on it. Fulton County officials say the extremely cold temperatures we've seen here. The county Sheriff's Office show Christian Eppinger is accused of stabbing an inmate inside the jail on Tuesday. According to a report, a detention officer told Eppinger to get away from the other inmate, and he then pulled out a shank and stabbed the inmate in the chest. That inmate was taken to Grady for treatment. In Thank <laughs> you. 